We are in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And we're starting in verse 15 tonight. We've moved on from verses 1 through 14. We've spent a long time there. And last time, I, we weren't able to have uh, services in person for a week and a half, I think it was, or close to that. And uh, so anyway, or a week or so. And um, But now we are in person, amen. In person and online. So all those who are watching online here, amen. Listen, this is, um, you know what? I have never done this total study of the life of Christ in my life. I mean, I've read through all the Gospels. I've read the New Testament. But I mean as a pastor. And this has been the most rewarding study. Not to say the Genesis study isn't either. I'm just telling you, just reading, studying, just looking at Scripture, comparing, and just trying to understand. And also, you know, try to bring some practical application to everything. You know, we don't want you to, you know, to be way up here and you say, well, what did the pastor say? Or is there anything in there for me? Amen. And uh, so anyway, um, so we're at this part, this starting verse 15, it, it gets pretty tough. And uh, it kind of leads us into some prophetic things, even though we've already looked at some of that. But and it's a pivotal point in the chapter. It really is. OK, so I'll read verses 15 to 20. And then I'll pray, and then we'll, we'll uh, get to the study tonight. <clears throat> when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And lastly, verse 20, But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Let's pray. Father, again, bless your word. Bless our fellowship around your word tonight. Father, we pray, dear God, that you would give us understanding. Help me as I teach and preach, Lord, that your people would have understanding. I pray the Holy Spirit would fill me and use me, Lord. And God, again, we just we thank you for the hope that we have in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord God, I just can't imagine people without Christ in this world seeing what's going on. Oh, God, help us. Help us tonight to get the word out, to get the gospel out, Lord God. I know it is getting close. We know that to your return. So help us tonight. Speak to hearts and meet with needs. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. This is, uh, this point here is basically the middle of the tribulation. And I'll show you in a minute. If you folks have been with us uh, in person here uh, with our study, a while back, earlier this year, we went through a lot of things in Daniel. And Daniel really is a key book in the Bible in understanding. You say, why? Because Jesus said so. He says, Daniel. <laughs> so if, if the Lord Jesus references Daniel, then you need to go to Daniel. You need to look at Daniel. We're not going to do that whole study, but I just need to go back to Daniel to refresh your memory for those who've been around. For those who are new, I, I recommend if you want to know which ones to look at or watch, if you want to get into the study, I can, I can give you the links. I could show you, okay? It's especially Daniel chapter 9. The Daniel chapter 9, I don't know how many weeks I spent on that study, but if you don't understand that, you will get all confused with all the stuff that's going on out there with preachers and stuff like that, and you'll actually put the bride of Christ in the midst of a tribulation. I've seen it every time because people just can't keep the nation of Israel separate from the bride of Christ. Amen? They just can't do that. They make them one and the same, or they say, God's done with Israel. We become the new Israel. 
And then they put the church in the tribulation. So anyway, but um, so let's, we're going to go over to that passage. And then what we're going to do, so verse 15 is basically, we'll talk about why it's the midst and why it's the middle of the week and so forth. And then what we'll do is verses 16 to 20 gives some specific instructions for the nation of Israel. Notice as we read, they're in Judea. I don't know if you've known this or seen this. You said, I know some people, I've heard of people in the last 10, 15 years that decided we're moving to Jerusalem. We're moving to Israel. Well, God bless your heart. But some of them were doing that because of this passage. This passage has nothing to do with the church. It has nothing to do with the church. And they'd move over there and they're saying, you know what? When all this stuff begins, we're going to flee to the mountains. Listen, it's not for you tonight. Amen. And I'll help you understand that. Amen. You're not a Jew in the midst of the tribulation. You are the bride of Christ. Amen. If you're saved tonight, you know Christ tonight, you're his bride. Jesus is not going to beat up his bride. I don't know how these people put the bride in the tribulation. God's wrath is being outpoured. You know you're indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. It's like God's pouring wrath on himself if he dwells inside of you. That doesn't even make sense. Amen? Come on. So praise God. You know, so we got a Bible. And we need to compare Scripture with Scripture. We need to rightly divide the Scriptures. Amen? Otherwise, I, I could make this mean anything I want if I don't compare Scripture with Scripture. That's part of the problem that we have in this world tonight. And uh, so keep your place there. And we are going to go to Daniel chapter 9. And I'll just refresh some of your memory and kind of highlight some key thoughts. I can't, there's no way. It took weeks. It took weeks. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. And uh, so Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, is the passage that correlates with this. And there's two other passages. One's in Daniel 11, 31. Another's in Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. And we went through all these verses. But... Daniel chapter 9 speaks of what's called Daniel's 70th weeks. And when you do the study, you'll find this out, that in God's prophetic timetable, 69 weeks of Daniel's 70 weeks have passed. They've already come to pass. And again, as you remember, as I've done this study in Matthew 24, we talked about preterism. Those who ascribe to preterism believe, oh, this is all, they have to spiritualize a lot of things that I've been preaching about, amen, to make this work, because they say it's already taken place, and it was fulfilled in 70 AD when Titus came to, <laughs> to Jerusalem, Titus of Rome, like, like we're really, there's so many problems with that, and we discussed some of those things. I spent a message, a lesson, just on that. Luke 21 passage does give us a, a, a passage of scriptures relating to the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, foretold by Christ. But this passage is not referring to that, okay? This is not past. This is yet to come in the midst of a tribulation. And the Lord says there's, um, that you and I as believers will be caught up. As I was at that funeral yesterday, and I was at that grave site, and I always read 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Just, those are the passages. And you know what? My heart breaks. People are weeping. People are crying. But you know what? If you're saved, you're going to see your sister in Christ again. She's in heaven. Praise God. She's absent from the body, present with the Lord. Amen? And you know what? Like I said yesterday, Albert and Evelyn... And, and Edna, I mean, they're all three from Newfoundland, came over here years ago, amen? Boy, I tell you, we're losing some history in our church, amen? And that's, by the way, I'll throw this in, it's not part of the message, that's where we need us younger to pick up the mantle, carry the torch, amen? Who's, who's going to do that? Amen? You know, these people, they, 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 they were, I call them the pillars of the church, they're going, they're going, they're going, going, gone. I'm serious, that's where we're at tonight. I buried practically every one of them. 
I, I, I've been here in, since November 98, November 18th, 23 years. I was 23 years younger, okay? These were the men. These were the people that, that, that really, listen, I tell you, they paid for this church. They said, you know what? Listen, I'm not, this is not a slam against any churches out there. I'm just telling you. They said, you know what? Our church changed so much where they were going. They said, your church reminded us of what our church used to be. That's why they came. I wasn't a sheep stealer. I didn't take anybody from any other church. They came on their own free will. They talked to me. And, you know, man, I'll tell you, it's just these people, I've, I've got a history of burying people. <laughs> Amen. It just, and it gets harder as the years go by because you're thinking, man, you know, and now I'm, I'm in their age bracket and moving up. Amen. And that's where I'm at now. So anyway, so we just need to thank God for what he's done. Bless the Lord. Amen. It's not about me. It never was. It never is about me. Amen. It's never is or was about just you either. It's about Christ. We're in this thing together. Let's reach, the, let's reach this world for Christ. Let's do all that we can to get the gospel out. Amen. And uh, so anyway, I thought I'd just say that, throw that in there. So Daniel chapter 9, there's those 70 weeks. The 70th week between the 69th and 70th, the preterist does not believe there's a gap there. Obviously, they don't. They believe there's no gap. Well, there is a gap. As a matter of fact, there's places in Isaiah 61, even in the Gospel of Luke, where Jesus was in the synagogue and he was reading from the book of Isaiah and he stops right at a certain point that has yet not been fulfilled. There's many examples of that in the Bible. That even Jesus quotes something from the Old Testament. He, didn't, he says, today this has been fulfilled. The part he read was fulfilled, not the part that he didn't read. And so there is a gap. It's an unknown period of time. We, some call it the age of grace. I don't like calling it that because God's always worked in grace. Amen. I call this the church age. That's what, we're, that's what I believe we should call it, the church age. And it began at, after Christ, listen now, he ascended, amen, praise God, he, he died, he was buried, he rose again, amen. Then 40 days on the earth, then he ascended up, 10, of, uh, uh, 10 days, 120 were in the upper room praying, um, following God, Lord Jesus' instructions to wait on God to be filled with the Holy Spirit, Amen. That's Luke chapter 24. And you get to Acts 1 that God used Luke to write, the book of Acts. You find a continuation. And then you find out that what happened? They waited on God. God filled them. Amen. And the people that were gathered there on that Jewish feast on the day of Pentecost, they were, they were there. They were Jews assembled from all these different places around that world in that area. And they came and they heard Peter preach the gospel. They got saved and they were baptized and they were added to the church the same day. How about that? 3,000 of them. 3,000. 3,000 people saved, baptized, and added to the church in one day. How about that? That's a miracle. I've seen people get saved. I've seen more than one at a time. Not by me, but groups of people trying to help people, minister to people at an altar. During a meeting, people come forward. I've baptized the many. Maybe not as much here as pastor, but I've baptized a lot in Ontario people. Man, I'll tell you, it's just there's some people. Man, you got someone who's taller than you, and I'm six foot three and a half. And I'm going, I had a better back back then. God, you know what? I don't know if you remember this. Some of you have been around a long time. God really, not that, look, God's not dead. Amen? Praise God. Listen, but I want you to know something. God can still work tonight. I saw some things in the 70s and the 80s. And it's not like, well, you know, let's get God some funeral. Let's, uh, let's have a funeral for God. Let's have some flowers. No, he's alive. The problem is not God. Amen. Well, if it's not God's fault, whose fault is it? 
Now, I know there's a mixture here between the earth. We got good seed. The ground is representative of the hearts and lives of people in this world tonight. There's another part. And you know who that is? God uses human instrumentality. If you're saved, he wants to use you tonight. Touches my heart when someone says, hey, pastor, we ran out of John and Romans. Amen? That's a good problem to have. Let's open up another box. What good? Haggai says if the seed's in the barn. Seed's no good in the barn. Got to get it outside. You say, this is a barn? No, but that's the analogy that the Lord uses. Get the seed out. Sow the seed of the Word of God. Tell folks about Jesus. Man, with all this stuff, you know, you're, I, I've read the headlines the last few days. I've, I've seen that Omicron or whatever you want to call it. But you know what? I'll tell you something right now. My hope's in Jesus. And we just need to get the Word of God out. Amen. I'm not living in fear tonight. I'm not. I'm not. It's just that we got to get focused. Get focused. Amen. Tell folks about the Lord. I'll just say this and we'll get back in Daniel 9. Brother Bond used to go door to door with me. Man, he, he had open... Uh, or he had uh, uh, TB at one time. I don't know. I can't remember if he had a pacemaker, all this kind of thing. We go up and down the hills here in Fairview. And he say, Pastor, I got to stop. I just, I'm out of breath. I said, not a problem. Take your breath. Let's just relax and fellowship. Come on. This is what I did years ago with these guys. Built this, fixed this building up. And some of you young guys, my son-in-law Kevin was here, and there's some others I'm just trying to think in those early years. Don was here. You know, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm just, I got a lot of good memories. I do. And I'm not saying it's all bad memories right now either. It isn't. I've been really, I'm just sharing with Brother Marco here. I don't know, God's doing something. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm encouraged by that. God is doing something in the church. He really is. Amen. So I just thank the Lord. It's just not me. It's just, Lord, thank you. The Bible says God gives the increase. Not you, not me. God gives the increase. Just be faithful, get in the seed. I don't know if they'll listen, Pastor. God says get, spread the seed, broadcast it. That's what the Bible says. Broadcast the seed. If it falls on good ground, praise God. Amen? People come to know Christ, and it doesn't. Listen, you did your job. Pray for people. Pray for the hearts and lives of people that receive the seed or take it. Pray that they would touch their heart. Amen? So, so anyway, so in Daniel chapter 9, there's a whole chapter. And basically, Daniel is speaking about his people. And if you read Ezekiel 20, which we might refer to later, you'll find out one big problem with the nation of Israel, and it's been around a long time, is the fact that they uh, had a problem with idolatry. Now, the kind of idolatry that you and I would think about, we think of statues and all, you know, images and so forth, and that was, again, that problem in the nation of Israel. But the Lord also likened idolatry to them being unfaithful. Unfaithful to God. And we can, we can identify with that one, amen? You say, I don't have an image that I bow down to. Well, bless the Lord. But, you know, anything you put above or before the Lord is an idol anyway. Isn't that what the Lord said in Exodus 20? Isn't that what the Lord said concerning Samuel, he says, you honored your sons above me. God judged them for that. He put his kids before the Lord. He put them above the Lord. Amen. It should never happen like that. And uh, we're living in a world where people are spoiling their kids rotten, and as a result of that, they're not learning any responsibility. Amen. Listen, I, I gave my kids stuff. I did stuff for my kids, but... I made them earn it and work for it. They were punished when they did wrong, and they were rewarded when they did right. There's a balance there, amen? It's not all punishment. The only time I hear from mom and dad is when I get in trouble. Well, that's pretty sorry. We need to, do, we need to reward as well as punish. That's what the Lord does. 
So in this chapter, he, when he gets down, he talks about he's praying and all these different things. You get down to verse 20, he starts talking about these 70 weeks of years. They're weeks of years. And if you, again, if you want the reference or whatever, or I can give you the link or so forth to that study, or you can just go to the Daniel study and look for Daniel 9. You can search stuff on YouTube. Okay? So anyway, so there's 70 weeks. Verse 24, determine upon thy people. Who, who's the people in question? Who's the people in view? It's not the church, the bride of Christ. It's the nation of Israel. Daniel's a Jew. He's not a New Testament church age saint. He's a Jew. He's Old Testament. Amen. He had faith in God. He's a prophet of God. You're going to see him in heaven. Bless God. Amen. And anyway, he says, upon thy holy city. Ottawa's not the holy city. Washington, D.C. surely isn't the holy city. It's Jerusalem. It's never any other place on planet Earth. The holy city is being... What does Jerusalem got to do with you right now? Nothing. Someday we'll have a new Jerusalem. Amen. Praise God for that. I talked about that yesterday. And then he says what? To finish the transgression, to make an end of sins. Didn't Jesus say it is finished? If he said that on the cross... And the context is to the nation of Israel. There's something that God says, I have to take care of some business with my earthly physical people. There's some things that I got to finish up with them. And that's what it is. They're idolatry. You know what? I hope and pray. I hope and pray. I, 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 I don't know if there's ever been a Jew that has come to know Christ uh, through my witnessing. I might get to heaven. And I don't know how it's all going to work, but the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 that we will be known even as we are known here. How about that? Amen? So maybe they'll say, hey, you know, I got saved. And they might say, you know, I, well, praise the Lord. I don't know how it's all going to pan out. I know one thing. When we get there, our focus will be on Christ. Amen? But we'll see our loved ones there. Praise God. Amen? And uh, so, but... Man, it'd be great. Some Jews got saved. I remember one time years ago, Hayes and I, we were up on, Qu on uh, um, Spring Garden. Thank you, brother. Spring Garden, the guy says, I'm a Jew. You ought to thank, you ought to thank us for, for your Savior. I said, listen, I, I do. I do thank him. But you need to open your eyes so you can realize that he is the Messiah. Said, oh, I don't believe that. He said, I don't want to talk to you. He was distributing magazines or something. That's what he said. My heart breaking. The Bible tells us in Romans 9 that Paul even said, I wish I was a curse from Christ. If it was possible to be a curse from Christ for my brethren's sake. He was praying for his God's chosen people. He had such a heart and a burden. His heart was so broken. His own people. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Amen. And, you know, so anyway, but I pray and hope some Jews get saved. Amen. Maybe God will use you. Or maybe God has used you. Share that with me after the, the message tonight. Amen. Love to hear it. You know, it's not impossible. The Bible says they're blinded. So are some Gentiles blinded. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, so anyway, so the transgression was finished on Cal at Calvary. We don't need to worry about that. And to make reconciliation for iniquity, bring everlasting right, seal up the vision of prophecy, anoint the most holy. So then he talks about some history and weeks, and there's a lot of history in here. And I, again, I don't have time to go through all of it. But anyway, when you get down to it, then he says this. Now watch this. Um, let's see here. And verse 27, and he so confirmed the covenant with many for a week. That's speaking about the Antichrist. You got to think about this. I've mentioned this before in our Matthew 24 study and in the uh, Daniel study. In order for people tonight to embrace somebody as a world leader for peace, you have to have a world that's in total anarchy. I think we're getting there. We are. We are. We're heading in that direction. And you know what? Um, and it's because people in this world, 
They, they know about God and they know about Christ, but they don't know him personally. It's one thing to know about him. I knew about him for 18 years. I was born, brought up and raised in the Catholic Church. I knew about Christ. I believed in the virgin birth. I believed in the deity of Christ. But I also believed that if I did a lot of good things and had faith and did all the sacraments, that I might get to heaven someday. But the Bible says the only way through to heaven is by faith in the finished work of the cross of Calvary of Jesus Christ. It's got nothing to do with your works. Because if you could save your own soul, what was the whole point in Christ coming to begin with? There would have been no purpose. Amen. If you could save your own soul without going through Jesus, he is the way. There's only one way. There's not, meant, not many roads to heaven. Well, you know, each religion is equal. No, they're not. And by the way, it's not religion. Much of what religion says and does is man's efforts to save themselves. It's all about a relationship. Amen? With Jesus Christ, with this God that we believe in. Amen? So he says there, the Antichrist, the Bible says, he'll confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle, watch this, in the midst of the week, so again, the week, you got to trust me without, you got to go back and watch. These are weeks of years. That's what they are. They're weeks of years. And he says in the midst of that week, well, if it's a week, weeks of years, that means seven years. What's the midst of seven years? Three and a half. That's not very complicated, is it? What's that? 42 months. What's that? 1,260 days. That's what it is. You say, how do you get that? Well, the Jewish calendar is about 30 days, and then they throw in an extra month every so often. We throw in, a, see, ours is like a quarter of a year or a quarter of a, uh, a day shy each year, and then we have to have a leap year to make up for the 365 and a quarter days that an actual calendar or solar years. Amen? So anyway, so they got to do the same thing. So in the midst of the week. So that means we've read Matthew 24 verses 1 to 14. Some of that, of course, Jesus, they were asking questions. Then when we got through that, we saw that it was the beginning of sorrows. That's the Lord likened trip, the tribulation, not just you going through trials and troubles, but the the Daniel's 70th week, the great tribulation, to a woman going through labor pains. And he, you know how it is, amen? Any woman here who's ever given birth to a child, they increase. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen here. Amen? I didn't bring this tonight. I, I, I wasn't. I, I asked my brother last week because I thought I, I'm going to share this with the folks. There is an image if you've seen this, you can talk to me after. I'll, I'll share it with you. There is an image that someone is making. There's going to be 21 of them in the world. And what it is is you climb inside this thing. It's like a giant form of a man, something like the image in Daniel there. Amen? That image of gold and all brass and all that. But instead, what it is is you stand inside. This thing scans you. And on the outside are all LEDs so that it takes a picture of your whole body and it immediately transforms the image into your likeness. So what it does. They're building this thing. They're going to have 21 of them and they're going to move them around the earth so people can listen. You know what the big problem is? We've looked at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It's all about exalting self. Don't we live in a world tonight that is just possessed with self-image? It's all about me. It's all about me. Worship me. The devil, it will, he desires worship. And that's what he's going to do in the midst of that week. We've read that last week online. Amen. And we'll take a quick peek at that. So in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. So what he's going to do is he's going to give the Jews uh, the freedom to worship their God. And in the midst of that week, the Bible says, he's going to shut it down. He's going to come into there. And as even Second Thessalonians says, and he will demand worship. 
And we know this, what's coming after that also in that time frame, is that you won't be able to buy or sell without having this mark of the beast. The mark is not a tattoo. The Bible says it's in the forehead. The word is very clear, in, not on. In the forehead or in the hand. You could say, well, maybe it's a ch I don't know what it's going to be. I ain't going to be here. Right. Amen. Neither are you if you're saved. So what am I worried about? Right. Amen. Now you, say, you ask yourself, well, why did God put that book in the Bible to begin with? Well, you know what? If you, t if you share this with people, you know what? Number one, people need to know that they're lost in their sin. But when they read stuff like this, they may go, oh, oh. Or maybe they say, I don't believe that stuff. Amen. I mean, I don't know where some people are at. Man, they believe everything you read on the Internet, even though the messages keep on contradicting themselves. Serious. It does. Well, this doesn't work, and that we're not sure about this now. Well, what about this and that? That's your source? Here's the source right here. I'm not discounting all of medical science either, by the way. Some people go to always extremes. They either believe everything or they don't believe anything. <laughs> you know what? Error always rides on the back of truth. Did you know that? There's got to be some truth there to catch your attention. Hey Amen. That's how the devil works. That's how the devil works. So anyway, he's going to come in there in the midst of the week, and he is, listen, he has been waiting for this for a long time. He wants people to worship him. The Antichrist, the devil, manifest in the flesh. The Bible says he'll be revealed when we're out of here. <laughs> well, he could be here. Yes, he could. Where is he? I don't know. I'm not looking for him. I'm listening for a trumpet sound. Amen? And I want to be faithful and keep on serving God and not get so sidetracked on everything else that's going on. Amen? So, let's go. So, he says there, and for the overspread and the abomination, he shall make it desolate. So, you say, oh, okay, there we go. There's the connection. Amen? And there's two other passages. In Daniel 11:31, and then there's one in Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. It talks about the desolation. And one of them could, and again, this Antioch Epiphanes, I think it's in the Daniel 11 passage, he's a type, could be a type, amen, when he offered the, offered the sow in the, uh, in, the, in the temple, okay? But you know what? It's not a fulfillment of what Jesus is saying. It's not. It's not that. But the thing is this, he's going to be worshipped. And it fits right in with our modern modern society selfie generation. It really does. It fits in perfect. Because I've never seen more people love themselves than I have seen since this last few years here. It's unreal self-love. Bible says it would be love, people would be lovers of their own selves and not lovers of God. Amen. Well, I tell you, lovers of pleasure too. Man, people are so mesmerized by all the animation and all the technology. They're so engrossed in that, they're not seeing the real reality. That's why this image that will go around different places in the world, that's why people will go, well, I want to get in that. I want to see everybody to see me in this giant image statue. Can you imagine? Hey? Hmm. It's the world for you. The world for you. How about that? Go to 2 Thessalonians 2, and then we'll come back to the, the Matthew passage. The Matthew passage. But first, 2 Thessalonians. We read this. I won't read it all, but I'll just, again, show you the part here. The Bible says in verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he is as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He wants people to worship him. We got the real true God tonight. Amen? Oh boy, I'll tell you. He wants, that's even as 
In Isaiah 14, the Bible talks about, he said, five I wills. I will ascend up. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. He hasn't given up. Amen? He hasn't given up. And that's what he's going to do. That's what he's going to do. In verse, um, the Bible says, even back in 54 AD in 2 Thessalonians, the Bible says, verse 7, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. He says, even back there, Paul writing this letter, he says, it's already in the works. It already is. You say, how come? It seems like, you know, I've been saved for 47. Some of you have been saved longer than that. Some of you have been saved less. Man, I've been hearing preachers saying he can come back tomorrow. Because if there's such a thing as a prophetic clock, it's basically stopped because it's all surrounding his relationship with his earthly physical people, the nation of Israel. That's what it is. You know what happens? When we're taken out, he resumes his program with them. And the Bible says he has to purge out the rebels. We'll, we'll see if we can get to those verses because I have a whole section of stuff on the wilderness trip in the tribulation. So, there's a wilderness trip? Yes, there is. With what's left of the Jews. How about that? Amen? And then he says there... Um, Let's see here, uh, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's when he returns. Amen. He's returning with us, the saints, at the end of the tribulation. We'll be on horses. Amen. Boy, I'll tell you, can't wait for that. He'll deal with it. He'll deal with it. Verse 11 says, For this cause God shall send a strong delusion. Oh, it's already happening. But it will get worse in the tribulation, far worse than you could ever imagine. You think, how can people believe something that's not real? How can people believe something that's not reality? How can people believe in something that's not even according to proven and tested science and God's design, biology of our bodies? How in the world can people do that? Delusion. That's why Jesus said, you know what? Before he returns, people in our world would be full of imaginations, just like in Noah's day. The Bible tells us before God brought that flood down, that the, the imaginations of mankind before the flood came were continually evil. Does that sound? Imagination. You're imagining something. You're really imagining things. I'll tell you, that's where our world is tonight. It's, it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad tonight, you know? But that's, that, that ought to stir you up to say, I need to tell folks about the Lord, man. We need, we need to encourage each other and the saints of God so we go forward not to quit and give up and say, oh, we're just hanging on till Jesus. No, get out there and get busy in the vineyard. Get busy in the fields of God. Why stand ye here idle all the day long, Jesus said? Don't we have something to tell? What message would be more important to share on social media than the message of the gospel and the message of Christ? Come on. What, did you hear about this? That's just like in Acts chapter 7, the Athenians, they always wanted to tell something new. Well, that's no different. We're doing that in 2021. Oh, did you see that? Yeah, about a million other people saw it. They're just sharing it with everybody else. Is that more important? Is that more important than life and matters of life and death? Amen? Boy, I tell you, I've been there a bunch of times. People taking their last breath. It's not a pleasant experience. It isn't. But you know what? For most of the people that I was there, I know for sure, I know for sure they were saved. They had a testimony of salvation. I can only remember one time of a person when I came, first came to Digby and I pastored there for four years. I was asked, and I know that individual had rejected the gospel and just didn't want anything to do with Christ. My wife tried, I tried. But who did they call? They called this preacher. They were part of an Anglican church. But they, they weren't going to it. 
They said, we called the Anglican minister. He wouldn't come. I came. I came at night. I was in that room in Tideview in Digby. Spending the last few moments with the family and after they, she took her last breath. Where is she, preacher? I said, I don't know. I know this. If she was saved, if she trusted in Jesus Christ as her Savior, she's in heaven. I don't give anybody false hope. You say, that's pretty unkind. I've, I've been in some services where it seems like the preachers always say that everybody who passes away is saved, even though you probably know they didn't even have a testimony of salvation. That's why you have so much liberty as a pastor to preach the gospel when you know the loved one, the deceased, has saved. Amen? It's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. Let's go to Matthew 24. So what is all this other stuff then, preacher? So is this the middle? This is the middle of the tribulation. Verse 15. So what is going on here? Well, some things are happening. Again, God's main dealings are with his earthly physical people. So you got to look at, you got to think about some things here. And we might have to finish part of this up for next week. Some people think because Israel became a nation in 1948 that everybody, you know, everything's fulfilled in the scriptures. No, it isn't. You know, there's still more Jews outside of the nation of Israel than in the, that geopolitical map of Israel. Did you know that? They're not all there. They're not all there. Oh, they, they, they exist as a nation. By the way, the Bible says they are the true Palestinians. I know that's a hard statement to take for some people because they go. Oh, I was reading about the Bal. I was reminding myself about the Balfour Declaration where the Brits said, hey, come on, we'll set this up for you here. Come on, go back home. <laughs> Please, just go. We'll set it up for you. That's what they did. That's what they did years ago, over a hundred years ago. Amen. You know what? Those Jews, they've been through a lot. They've suffered a lot. I'll tell you. So anyway, when you read the Bible, you'll find out that, you know, yes, people have willingly located in Israel, but they're not all there. God says, when this thing begins, this tribulation, they will be forced back to their land. All of them. Without exception. It won't be, well, I don't feel like going. No, they'll be forced. What will take place to force them? I'm not really sure. I just saw today in the news feed about the Hanukkah. And I think, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. City Hall, they had a Hanukkah celebration this week. Amen, the Jews. I thought, wow, that's, that's good. I wonder if we can do a celebration up there too about Christ and his birth, amen. I don't know if that would go off too well. I'm not knocking what they did, amen. But I thought, wow, people say, boy, that's so wonderful. You know what? People need the Lord. That's, that's what it is. So anyway, um, so they're, they're going to be forced. God's going to make this thing happen. Amen? It's going to take place. Look at Jeremiah chapter 16. She so said, well, what does that got to do with all this stuff? Well, you'll understand as, you read, as I read through some of these things, and you'll see, he's going to make them go home. You know, there are people, there are Jewish people who are making money hand over fist, very wealthy. I'm not, I'm not, we're not a matter of jealousy. It's just that they're very successful materially. Amen? They are. And, you know, they just, a lot of them, a lot of them know how to deal with money. I'm not saying everyone's honest either. Amen? But at the same time, boy, they're, they're very successful. You know, in the time of Esther, they did not all return. Did you know that? Some people don't understand that. That's why Esther was there and Mordecai and a bunch of other Jews. They were, they were very successful there. But you know what? 
God has a way of working around people who are disobedient, <laughs> that didn't go back home. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he preserved his people through Esther. Amen. That's not a, that's not a God putting his stamp of approval. Don't obey what I tell you to do to go back home if you were a Jew. No, it's just, they didn't. You know what? You can't mess up God. If God's got a plan, he's going to fulfill that plan. Nobody's going to trip up God and say, oh, <laughs> God will say, yeah, oh, boy, I really messed up on that one. Of course not. It's not God, it's us. He's using us frail creatures of God, amen, to fulfill his plan and purpose. Who else is he going to use? Amen, of course, the closer you are to him, the more he can use you for his glory. But there's some people in that genealogy in Matthew that you can't explain. Amen. Rahab the harlot, a Moabitess, Bathsheba. I'm not knocking. God used those people. You were the one to choose. You would never have chosen those people. Amen. God has a way. How about Tamar and Judah? You got to figure this stuff out. Well, yeah, that's the line through the line of Christ. That wasn't a good situation. God's using us. He says, I'm going to fulfill my plan. And he does. You can't trip him up. Amen? So Jeremiah chapter 16. You're there. I'm getting there. Jeremiah 16. We'll look at some of these verses, and then we'll have to do the wilderness trip next week, okay? But this is kind of preparation for your understanding about that. So in verse 14, look at this. Jeremiah 16, verse 14, the Bible says, And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through thy comeliness which I had put on thee. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong page here. I was saying, wait a minute, that's not it. Yeah, you're saying, where is the preacher tonight? Chapter 16, there we go. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, it shall be no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Look at this. It's still their land. And if you do the study, the land that they possess now is just so small compared to what God promised. They have a tiny, tiny little piece of that land that God promised. It'll all be there someday. God says, I'm bringing them back. You got scared. He said, why aren't the Jews scattered? Because God scattered them. He told them in the Old Testament times, you don't live for me, you don't follow my statutes, I'll scatter you. Listen, there was a dispersion there. 70 A.D., you know the people that died of that? Whole, I mean, the siege of Jerusalem. You ever read that stuff? starvation and what went on so terrible siege warfare you know what those people the records are destroyed they're all destroyed how do you prove you're you're a jew how do you prove that i know this there's one i got his record his name is jesus we got it in the book we got his genealogy it's been preserved for thousands of years amen Praise the Lord. Look at another passage, Ezekiel 20. Ezekiel 20. I know, we've got to wrap up soon. God's an amazing God tonight. The more I study this book, the more I see, wow, look what God did. God's got a plan. He's got a purpose. He's going to bring them all back. He's going to make them go home. Ezekiel chapter 20. And again, this, this chapter is... I refer to it a lot. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 33. As I live, 
saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, will fury be poured out. This is a future judgment of the nation of Israel. Will I rule over you, and I will bring you out from the people, and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered. With a mighty hand, with an stretched out arm and fury poured out. He's going to gather them and bring them back together. And the Bible says he's going to deal with their idolatry. That's going to be a tough time. It's really good. You know what? They need to get saved. You know what? Everybody needs to get saved, whether you're Jew or Gentile. How about that? Amen. Praise God. What else here? Ezekiel 36. Go to a move on there. Ezekiel 36, verse 24. The Bible says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. That's the nation of Israel. That's the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what will happen? God, God, will gather them by force. That's what he's going to do. He's going to gather them by force. Because they all don't want to go back there. <laughs> they don't. But they will someday. They will. I'm telling you. No matter what the world has tried to do, you can go back through all the periods of history. And the last great persecution that I, if I'm not mistaken, is the one during World War II, the Nazis. And they still exist today. How about that? Amen? So what will happen here? Okay, let's see if we can look at something else here. During that tribulation of a regathered nation of Israel, Zechariah 13, and we'll save the, the trip in the wilderness, the wilderness trip next week. We'll call it that, okay? The wilderness trip. In the time of tribulation, amen? How about that? Zechariah. Chapter 13. I love the book of Zechariah. That's an amazing book. Oh boy. So many things. Zechariah. Look at this. Boy, prophecy. I love verse 6. And one shall say unto him, Amen. This is when the Lord returns. Amen. At the end of the tribulation. What are these wounds in thy hands? Then he shall answer, These are these are which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Amen. His brethren. Amen. Wow. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. That's what happened. Who's at the cross? Some women, Mary, John. Where'd they all go? Peter denied the Lord. Judas betrayed Christ, went out and hung himself, threw that silver on the ground the temple there. Amen. Just a handful. What happened to all the people that were fed and all the people that were healed? Where were they? They weren't there that day. They weren't there that day. Amen. Boy, I'll tell you. Look at this. And it shall. This is again. I mean, I'll tell you, during the tribulation time. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. You know what God just said? Two-thirds of God's chosen people will die during that tribulation time. And one alive. Wow. So, it's, well, I don't believe in all this stuff. I believe there's a lot of believers after, after the fact. <laughs> they need to be saved. Amen. He says, and I will bring the third part through the fire. Refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is dry. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. And I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. But God has to purge out a bunch of them. You know, just like I said, we'll go into the wilderness. There's a whole bunch of things in that Matthew 24 passage, all of those things where they go into an area what we believe could be Petra. And we'll talk about that too. But 
you got to think about this. Matthew 7 tells us how that Jesus says, the ones that find life eternal are few. Few find it. You've heard me say this. What is few versus many? Amen? Few. What would you say a few is? Two or three, eh? I'm not saying there's only two or three that are saved, but we know this. It's a lot smaller than, oh, the majority know Christ and are saved, and we're going to see them in heaven. That's why, and I'm not trying to get anybody to doubt their salvation tonight, but I'll tell you something. You better examine whether ye be in the faith tonight. Are you saved? Have you put your faith and trust in Christ? And if you have, what are you doing for Christ right now? What are you doing for Him? God didn't just save you to wait on Him, to just wait till He comes back. No, God gave us, God gave us some things to do. Amen. We need to be faithful in that. And we need to be, listen, I'm telling you, people need the Lord. I like that song. Man, I'll tell you, people need the Lord. Amen. They need the Lord. They need the Lord tonight. Who's going to tell them? Our gospel be hit. It's hit to them that are lost. You hiding the truth? People need it. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word tonight. God, be with Lord God, your people tonight, help us to see the, Lord God, the necessity. Help us to see that, Lord God, that we need to redeem the time because the days are evil. Lord God, help us to see that tonight. We know, Lord God, people need you tonight. Help us to be that witness, Lord God. Father, we pray, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for your earthly, physical people. We pray that you, God, that where I, their eyes would be opened. They would come to know you as Savior. God, help them. Help them. Now, Lord God, we just pray tonight. Again, you would just help us to take what we've heard, apply, Lord God, be faithful to you, and see the urgency of this matter tonight. Because we know your return draweth nigh. Now, God bless as we take these few moments to pray, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.